Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Big Vale, and in today's video, Big Vale becomes the teacher. I know, crazy, crazy, but trust me, I feel unqualified to do this. So it is drag bat, that's the subject of today. I've been using it pretty solidly at Town Hall 14, probably for the last four or five days now. My hit rate has gone way above and beyond any any town hall or any strategy that I can remember. Um, I'm three starring all over the place, whether it be in friendly wall legends, friendly challenges. And I want to translate that knowledge over into a YouTube video to try and help you guys improve your drag back game. So what we're going to do, we're going to be doing some friendly challenges. I'm going to get some of my clan mates to help me out by posting up bases. I'm going to be hitting them on the video for you. And while I'm hitting them, I'm going to talk a little bit about my thinking behind it. And in some instances, we're also going to do a little bit of analysis and breakdown of why I did what I did. And that'll be sort of post attack. So, OK, anyway, that's enough talk, guys. Let's get straight into the video. So before we actually start attacking, let's do a little breakdown of the first base that I'm going to be hitting. So this is from Putty, again, the leader of the, uh, the clan that I'm in also is a moderator on my Twitch stream, so if you haven't already checked out my Twitch streams, twitch.tv slash bigvale83. We do a lot of competitive wars, friendly wars, knockout tournaments. It's all fun and games, guys. It'd be awesome to see you there, and I do tend to stream from about 5pm Eastern most days of the week. Anyway, enough of that, enough of the self-promotion. So let's talk about how we go about breaking down this base. So there's a few things that you need to look out for when doing drag back. And the primary one for me, joint primary, alongside pathing is splash and multi-targeting defences. So when I say that, I'm talking about scatter shots, I'm talking about inferno towers on multi, and I'm talking about wizard towers. So if we look around, we've got a symmetrical base, so we can come in theoretically from either side. So I'm looking at initially either four or seven. So each has their own merits, so 7 o'clock we don't have a sweeper to contend with, it's pointing north, we'll be able to take that out on the path of the dragons if they get sent in that way. If we go in from 4, we've got the sweeper pointing down, but I think we can mitigate that by just making sure that we follow the pathing between these two lines here. It should be manageable, so if we push the dragon straight up through there, we should be okay. Um... But the positive to that is, of course, we've got a multi-targeting Inferno right there. And of course, just like on the left side, we do also have two Wizard Towers that can be collateral damage on the way through. So that's two out of five Wizard Towers taken down really early on in the push. Okay, so first step, that's done. We know what we're going to do. We know how the Dragons are going to go in. How are we going to get them to direct that way, though? Okay, and this is where we look at my army composition. So this is the standard one that I've been using for a lot of the friendly wars and friendly challenges. They may look a little bit weird having two yetis in there, but they're really effective funneling troops. Um, they can take out trash buildings if untouched. They can take out trash buildings till the end of time. But once they start getting targeted, that's where they come into their own and releasing the yeti mites can really help to clear out buried defenses that may mess with pathing. Uh, we've got 12 balloons, 10 dragons, so usually you'll use most of the balloons with the dragons just as a, uh, like, like a meat shield. So it's like a wall in front of the dragons to pick up any traps, to soak up any initial shots and keep them rocking through the base. Uh, as for spells, we carry two rages, one in the clan castle, one in our spell factory. And the reason why we've got two, spell, uh, two rage spells is because one I use with the dragons, the second one I'll usually use with the blimp. So I carry a Dragloon Blimp, That's, it's fairly versatile. So if you manage to take down the Town Hall early on, it also converts really well into joining in with your main push of dragons. So you won't have to send it into the uh, into the Town Hall, you can send it in to meet up with your dragons or you take out a high value target on the back end. It, it's just very versatile. We only have three freezes here, which is why we need to make sure we're getting maximum value from these dragons. We're going to give it a go. We're going to give it a go soon, once we've finished talking through the theory. Anyway, so we've got our Yetis. I've explained why we've got them. So what we'll do, we'll put one Yeti down here on the army camp. We'll put one down on the Dark Elixir drill. And what that's going to do is take out the army camp. It should possibly, maybe with the assistance of one balloon dropped in on the cannon, take out the cannon and the archer tower there. 
the Yeti over here is only going to have an Archer Tower targeting, so I think it should be able to get through at least these structures here, this triangle here. And that then sets the path that we were talking about. So we do still have heroes to send in. Um, and another thing that's a little bit unusual about this composition is that I do have a poison spell in there. Oh, I've got drawing on the screen still. So I've got a poison spell in there still. So you don't normally carry that with drag bats. Normally you let the dragons do the work. They'll melt through most clan castles. This poison spell is there as a, as a backup option, but it also allows you a little bit more versatility with your initial suey. So if I was doing it without poison, I would never be able to try and suey into the town hall because the clan castle's there. The heroes would get wiped with a really well-chosen clan castle, whether it be headhunters, a trash CC, uh, how not so much, but headhunters and the trashy CC filled with archers, goblins, etc. would be a potential big issue for me. Not when you've got a poison. So we're going to try and see our heroes up there. Take out the clan castle. Maybe even take out the town hall if we can. It's possibly a bit ambitious. And that's going to form the remaining part of the funnel when the yetis are down. And what that'll do, if you imagine, once we've taken out this area here. Once we've taken out this area here. And once we've taken out this down here. You've got a really clean funnel then. So you've got your dragons funneling up here, straight to here, and then they may start to spread a little bit, and hopefully they will. Hopefully they will, because if they do, we've got great potential to then take out this wizard tower here. That will leave us with just one wizard tower in the base to worry about. No multi infernos, only one scatter shot. Honestly, this seems like a golden, golden opportunity to three star this base. So, enough talk more action let's get into it guys let's see if we can actually put this theory into practice and take it down so we'll start off with our yeti over here we've got in fact let's try and get that cannon down early there we go cannon yeti we've got some cc troops being pulled out already which is kind of perfect actually it's just what we were hoping for Ooh, that army camp's not gone down and it's not going to go down oh it is it is perfect Perfect, perfect. So then we'll drop the king over here. And I'm going to poison here because I want these CC troops all within the poison. And that should capture them all here. Queen goes down. So queen's going to support the king with the takedown. And what I'm doing, I'm thinking, because we should be able to get the town hall down here. I'm looking ahead to pathing later on. And I'm actually thinking, I'm going to blimp in here. And take out this max level scatter shot. Seems to be the right thing to do for me. Yak is busting the queen through. Can it get her through the wall? It does. So hopefully the queen's going to step up. She does. Town hall should be taken down here. But I think we're in a position now where we can start to look at. Fire off that queen ability. Keep her alive as long as possible. Loons in. Dragons in. Warden is down. So we've got the RC still in hand. Have we got any more wizard towers? We do have one more wizard tower in play. Let's fire off that eternal tome. Let's protect the dragons and loons moving through here. Okay, so far, this is looking okay. So far, so good. Ooh, do we need to get a... Dr oh, let's rage. Let's rage. The sweep is giving us some nasty pushback. Okay, so we're going to get the RC sent from on the top. And what I want to do... When you've got one scatter remaining, no real splash around it, we're going to bat bomb that scatter. And that means drop all the bats straight on top of it. And the reason for that is because, of course, it's got that dead zone that it can't shoot in, which is immediately next to it. And here we have bats flowing through the base. We've got three freezes that, frankly, we don't really need to use. We'll use one up here just to help out a little bit. But we don't need two of our freezes. This is crushed. That base is wiped out. That's all defense is gone. We've still got a few dragons left. We've got a handful of bats. We've got a couple of balloons. We've also got a warden on full health. So if you were doing this as a legend hit, then that's one less hero to wait for when it comes around to doing your next attack. So we've got our two freezes here. Nothing else left to drop in. We do kind of full send with this army composition. So you, you don't really hold anything back tactically for later. The only thing that deviated in that plan was, I didn't talk about it beforehand, but sending that blimp into the top scatter... And I did that mainly because 
I knew that that could cause some pathing issues and I knew that scatter shot was going to be heavy heavy hitting and it would do some serious damage to my dragons moving through so it just seemed like the right thing to do sometimes you've got to make decisions on the fly it's not all black and white and as much as I'm going to try and guide you with this video it's not going to be a one size fits all sometimes you're going to have to deviate a little bit just to get the job done okay so this next base it's a different layout same basic approach to it so we've got to keep an eye out for multi infernos we've got to keep an eye out for wizard towers and scatter shots um looking at it here we've got where well, we've got two multis so we've got one here we've got one over here we've got the scatter shot split over here and wizard towers are one by the town hall one over in the three o'clock side one at 12 one here and one here so it looks to me like we've got a concentration of defenses around this area here so in fact let me get rid of that so around here around this side of the base so if we can take out most of this area with our initial push before the bats go in i think we'll be on to a winner already so what my plan is going to be for this one i'm looking at the multi inferno i feel like i want to get my king in there it's not got any really tough defending heroes around it so we haven't got the defending king there we don't have the warden that has those heavy heavy high dps shots it's only the rc which she's uh, she's tough but the king can get through her so i'm thinking i'm going to drop a balloon here to take out the mortar maybe need to maybe we'll see we'll drop the king on the top corner of the army camp and i want the king to work his way up here here and then into this compartment and take out everything there um, meanwhile, while the king's doing some tanking in there, we're going to be sending our queen from here. So she's going to work her way down, smashing everything over the walls. So all of this should be gone. All of this should be gone. And I'm also going to double up on the ranged targeting heroes by sending the RC in behind. So we'll probably drop the RC, I guess, on this cannon here. So the RC's path will look something like mm, maybe here. Might need to fire off the RC ability at this point just to make sure the RC doesn't go out again. So I want the RC to ideally move in to finish off the scatter shot. So we will ultimately have taken out everything over here. This entire size of the base should be gone once all said and done. And once that's done, guys, the attack, it's kind of straightforward. I hate to say it. All we'll need to do is probably drop our yetis because we've got yetis this is a standard composition i'm using so i'll probably drop the yetis somewhere over here just to create some kind of funneling and make sure we don't get dragons working to the outside you also get the bonus that the yeti mites will jump over and possibly take out the air defense possibly the archer tower if not no big deal the dragons can easily get through them and then we just send in a drag push from here all the way across the other sides of the base and they should get a pretty comprehensive wipe. As for the bat portion of the attack, I feel like we're going to need to save it for the back end once the blimp, which we're going to send in behind the dragons at the right time. And I, I tend to do that based on feel, but ideally I want the dragons to get far enough into the base to have picked up any initial seeking air mines and had a chance at finding a nado. Um, I think I'll probably allow them to get about as far as here. X marks the spot before we send in the blimp. So the blimp will take out the town hall and i think that we'll probably probably have the wizard tower to get through i'm not sure if the balloons coming from the blimp will take that down so i'm feeling like given that all of this is already gone that wizard tower would be a good starting point so the poison from the town hall it's pretty potent and that should probably still be in effect when i drop the bats in not ideal but the bats will be in it for such a, slow, a small amount of time. I don't think it's going to be a huge deal. So the bats hopefully are going to be pathing probably here, 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 and then here. I'm not sure how much of the base will be left. Um, honestly, I'm hoping not much because these dragons have a real concentrated path to run through. I don't think, I don't think. We should have too much to worry about this scatter shot should definitely be gone hopefully this wizard tower as long as they're gone anything else is just whatever you know throw it at me guys because these point defenses ain't going to stand a chance against my massive swarm of bats okay anyway guys enough talk let's have a go at it let's get straight into the practice 
So we've got a balloon dropping down on the mortar. Hopefully that mortar is going to go down. Ooh, nearly second balloon needed. So we'll drop our king here. I think I dropped that balloon a little bit too close to the um, air defense. Live and learn. Live and learn, guys. Okay, so when the king gets locked onto by the Tesla, we'll drop the queen into support. King getting held up by skeletons. I did not see that coming. We've got the king ability that we can use soon. I'm thinking now. Sooner rather than later is probably not the worst thing here. The king is drawing the attention of the RC, I hope. He does. Okay, brilliant. So the queen doesn't have to tackle the RC. We've got the RC of our own moving in. Queen ability, let's fire that off. Take out the defending RC. RC, move in. Okay, we'll fire off that ability to take out the mortar and get her into the scatter shot. That is integral to making this work. So Yeti. Yeti. Wizard. And we'll get the balloons down. Okay, Warden in behind. Of course, we've got the Town Hall on the far side, so we're going to have to be pretty pretty patient with when we send the blimp in. We need it to be as protected as possible through the Eternal Tome. Um, I guess now is actually not a bad time. Okay, 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 okay. And we'll fire that off now. Okay, so hopefully the blimp is going to make it through. It does. Okay, so Town Hall will go down. We've got the multi down in the core. Ooh, that was the tower. It is being tanked for by the dragon, so let's finish it off with some bats sneakily on the back end. I was hoping the dragon would take that down. Didn't quite happen for us, but we are going to clutch this one up, guys. We have got it, and again, if the dragon portion's done correctly, you can walk away with a pretty comprehensive three with this without even using any of your free spells. Just saying, just saying, that's how powerful drag back can be if executed correctly. So it's all about having that initial plan in figuring out what your pathing for the dragon is going to be. So the, uh, the pathing has to pick up as much value as possible. And that's exactly what we did there on this second base of the video. So the final base that we're going to hit for the video is going to be this one. So it's got one multi inferno right in the core, core multis heavily in the meta from a base building perspective at Town Hall 13. Uh, probably still going to be strong at Town Hall 14, honestly, so I don't see anything really changing there. And our plan, again, it's all going to be about setting a direct funnel for the dragons to follow and using the bats for the back end just to help clear some trash out and just to protect the dragons, keep them rocking through the base for as long as possible. So my plan here is going to be to drop a Yeti in here so Yeti can go there, and we're going to send the RC in there. So the RC is going to take out the cannon, move into the air defense, and then take out that scatter shot. Scatter shot down, that's one splash defense gone. I'm then going to drop the king here, and he's going to help work his way all the way up, take out most of this, just doing squiggly lines here, but you get the picture. Hopefully he'll get the queen down as well, who will be on the outside of the wall if this goes right. We're going to drop the queen in over here to help the king out. And that should, should mean that we get a hero push in towards the eagle artillery. Um, from then onwards, we've got a really straight, again, drag path. And that dragon path is going to move in through here. So it's going to move in from the 11 o'clock side in towards the town hall. We may start with one dragon on that dark elixir barracks, just to make sure the, the dragons don't deviate to the outside. But yeah, it's pretty much as simple as that, guys. The bats, we're going to look to use... I might bat bomb the multi in the core. I might do, depending on whether that still stands from the dragons. We'll, we'll find out soon, I guess. And as for the blimp, that's going to come directly behind the dragons. So once the dragons get to about here, again, once they've had a chance to pick up seeking air mines, find tornado traps, the blimp will come in from behind. So again, that's all the theory. Let's see how that goes in practice. Okay. Okay, so you go there. RC can go there. Let's drop a couple of balloons on that lone arch. Ooh, we've got a Tesla popping up too. Cheeky. 
So we're still following the path that we expected it to. Let's get the king and queen in. I'll see ability. Can I hold on to it until after the scatter goes down? Yes, I can. Let's fire it off now. Okay, king working on the queen, as expected. Let's drop another yeti here. I'm trying to hopefully get the queen to divert into the eagle compartment with the king. Probably not going to happen, but I, I don't think that's really such a problem at this point. King's getting a ton of value already. Come on, queen, where are you going? Where are you going, queen? Okay, we'll just leave her to do her thing. Yeah, she's doing queen things, isn't she? Okay. Fine. Balloons in. Dragons in. We've got the warden in behind. Queen does go in eventually. Let's get our first rage fired off. So dragons have made it more or less to the point that we wanted them to. So we'll get the eternal tone fired off with the blimp pathing through. We've still got our rage for the back end to deal with the town hall. Beautiful. So town hall will go down. Multi in the core is going to go down. How about that wizard tower there? You have to freeze up the RC. The dragon was taking some real heat from it. Let's help those dragons out. Drop the bat bomb on the wizard tower. Wizard tower is going to go. We've got bats that are going to flow through now. We've got a good split on them. And again, we've got two freezes that honestly we don't really need. We are going to use them again because I'm not all about waste, guys. Admittedly, I did waste a couple of them earlier on in the video, but we're getting the job done. We'll waste that final freeze. We'll swag it. We'll swag it. And that is another three star with drag bat on a Town Hall 14 base. Okay, guys, just to summarize the four key points to a drag bat. From Big Bale's perspective, are number one, funneling. Funneling, funneling, funneling. You have to funnel your dragons. You have to have a set path for them to follow through the base. Otherwise, you'll just end up with a huge spread. The dragons will end up being picked off one by one because they're unable to get through structures quickly enough as a single unit. They work best together as a pack. Second point, splash value. So when you're creating your funneling, you'll have to have in mind that you want to follow a path with some splash defenses or multi-targeting defenses on the way. So whether that's wizard towers, whether it's scatter shots, uh, multi-infernos, anything like that, get rid of as many as possible using the dragons. Of course, you may have already taken one or two out of your heroes for your funnel, but you know, you know, we can't bank on that. So the dragons have to get maximum value. Third point, limp pathing. So this goes kind of along the same lines as the uh, the dragon push. So more often than not, you'll be sending the blimp in behind the dragons when they've probably got, I don't know, about 20% about of the way through the base. It's all situational. It all depends where the town hall is. If the town hall is on the opposite side, perhaps you'll want to send the blimp in a little bit later just to make sure those dragons and balloons have had a chance to pick up as many air traps as possible. If it's a core town hall, you can probably send it in, I don't know, about 15-20% of the way through the base once the dragons are that far in and be ready to fire off that eternal tome. If the blimp doesn't make it to the town hall, I'm speaking from experience here, more often than not you will one star. And finally, bat location. Very important, it's 50% of the name of drag bat. Um, not if you include the letters, but whatever. It's 50% of the name of drag bat. So you need to make sure that you're looking after your bats, you're making sure that you're using them effectively. And to do that, you've got two potential locations to drop them, or two that will come up commonly anyway. One will be a bat bomb on a scatter shot. So if you've got a scatter shot that doesn't have any splash defenses within range, or if it's not in range of any splash defenses, more to the point, you can drop those bats straight on top of the scatter. It'll take it down, no problem. Of course, that scatter's dead zone will not be able to pick up the bats, and they'll fly off, go their own merry way, and you just be ready with the freezes, drop them in as and when you need to. Hopefully, like some of my attacks, you won't need to. You can just swag two or three freezes, but let's not bank on it. Those freezes are there for a reason. The other place to potentially drop them would be 
somewhere near to your dragons. Again, if your dragons are, I don't know, for example, tanking for a wizard tower, if that wizard tower is locked onto a dragon and you think, wait a minute, this dragon isn't going to get the wizard tower down, you drop those bats straight on top of it. Those bats will work through the wizard tower. That's one splash defense done. And the bats again can go off and do their own thing. And again, as always, just be ready with freeze. Make sure you've got it selected. Make sure you are ready to press wherever's needed. Um, when it comes to bat pathing, you just need to make sure that you're actually looking at logically where the bats are going to go and that you're ready to press that freeze. A late freeze can absolutely end an attack. It could change it from being a guaranteed stonewall triple into being quite an underwhelming two star. So make sure that freeze is ready to go and you've got an idea of where those bats are headed to. Okay guys, so that's the end of my first guide, drag bat, an attack really close to my heart. I've been doing it for quite some time now with some great success. If there are any different guides that you'd like to see in the future, whether it be smash attacks, hybrid, Lalo, please do let me know in the comments section or if you want to hop into my discord please feel free to do so link is in the description of the video and just let me know in there but that's enough for today thank you so much for watching hope you have an awesome rest of your day much love and big veil is out